Okay, this is the second video on German expansion 1938 to 1940. This video specifically will be on challenging the post-war settlement after 1937, the Sudeten crisis. After the success of annexing Austria, Hitler turned his attention to Czechoslovakia. There were several reasons for this. Hitler considered Slavs who lived in Czechoslovakia to be racially inferior. Further, many Czechs had resisted Austrian rule in the old Austro-Hungarian Empire and fought for Russia in World War I. Also, Czechoslovakia was the only successful state created by the Treaty of Versailles, and an ethnically diverse successful state at that. Lastly, Czechoslovakia was a supporter of the League of Nations as well as an ally of France and Russia. However, the reason that Hitler would officially use in his rhetoric regarding Czechoslovakia concerned the minority of Germans that lived within the borders of the country. The annexation of Austria had led to many of these Germans living in Czechoslovakia hoping that their region might be next. Over three million Germans lived in Czechoslovakia as a minority, most in the region known as the Sudetenland, which is highlighted here on this map in red. The darker red, the more Germans lived in that area. Most of these Germans were involved in what was called the Sudeten German Party, a political party that had similar ideals to Nazism. In March of 1938, Konrad Hinlein, who was head of the Sudeten German Party, met with Hitler and drafted a list of demands for the Czechoslovak government calling for Sudeten self-rule. President Edvard Binnis of Czechoslovakia was willing to give Sudeten Germans more rights. However, he didn't want to grant independence to them lest other groups also call for independence and also the Sudetenland break away as a whole. Part of the reason he was worried about that was the Sudetenland had many rich resources and was the site of most of the Czechoslovakian defenses. In May, President Bennis had the Czechoslovak armed forces mobilized to illustrate their unwillingness to be annexed like Austria. This angered Hitler further. Unlike Austria, Czechoslovakia had been established by the international community at the end of World War I, and thus the country had alliances with France and the USSR, meaning their involvement in the matter was not a choice like it was in Austria. The USSR pledged to help only if France became involved, knowing that most likely that wouldn't happen. They were also not really interested in going to war over Czechoslovakia. France responded by asking Britain to help mediate, as France was in the middle of fortifying the Maginot Line in eastern France to possibly prepare for a German attack, and therefore didn't have the capabilities to get involved in Central Europe. Britain largely felt that the idea of Germans wanting to live in Germany was not wrong, and so pressure was placed on President Bennis to agree to the demands of the Sudeten Germans. With Britain reluctant to be involved, in July of 1938, France informed President Bennis that there would not be a war with Germany over the Sudetenland. Germany then mobilized 750,000 troops on the border to put more pressure on the government to concede to Sudeten self-rule. In September, the government, under threat of military invasion and war with Germany alone, conceded and agreed to the demands of the Sudeten Germans. However, this wasn't exactly what Hitler wanted. He didn't want to rest until Germany occupied the region with a military presence. Thus, Hitler ordered Hinlein to give them a reason to invade. The Sudeten German Party began staging riots. Two members of the Sudeten German Party were arrested, and Hinlein claimed the Czech government was persecuting them and broke off all communications with the government. Hitler claimed Czechoslovakia intended to round up all Sudeten Germans and kill them. On September 13th, Prime Minister of Britain, Neville Chamberlain, flew to Germany to discuss the situation with Hitler. After this meeting, Chamberlain met with the French Prime Minister to discuss the meeting. It was decided that areas with 50% German population or higher should be ceded to Germany. Bennis hesitated, 
but ultimately agreed on September 21st in an attempt to stave off an invasion. Hitler responded to this by calling for more. All Hungarians and Poles, he said, should be allowed to separate as well. He also called for military occupation by German troops in the Sudetenland starting in October to help protect them from Czech persecution. Britain and France rejected this, and war appeared imminent. Mussolini, alarmed at the possibility of being dragged into a war in Europe that he wasn't prepared for, called for a meeting between Britain, France, and Germany in Munich. Czechoslovakia was not invited. The Munich summit was from September 28th through the 30th of 1938, and the agreement reached at the end, the Munich Agreement, did the following. The Sudetenland would become part of Germany. German troops would occupy the Sudetenland. A plebiscite would help decide whether citizens approved of this. German troops would be released from Czech service. Hungary would get South Slovakia. Poland would get Teschen, which is another region. And an international commission would settle any disputes. Czechoslovakia was told by Britain and France if it did not agree to this, it would be fighting Germany alone. Without a choice, they agreed. In France and Britain, the public celebrated the news that the war had been avoided, and diplomacy had continued to succeed. However, they were also aware that Czechoslovakia had been lost as a potential ally, and that Germany was even stronger now. Both Britain and France spoke of diplomacy as paramount, yet continued to increase their military funding behind the scenes. In the Soviet Union, Stalin felt rejected by the Munich Agreement. They hadn't even been invited to the meeting, despite being an ally of Czechoslovakia. They also felt that France and Britain had shown their weaknesses, and that they would end up negotiating with fascists if necessary. Further, Stalin pointed out that the two might even support Germany if a war broke out against the Soviet Union because they were all anti-communist. In Germany, Hitler was relieved war had been avoided. His experts had actually told him upon in inspecting Czech defenses that if they had actually gone to war, they probably would have lost. Hitler's popularity soared, and the cult of Hitler grew as he once again showed the German people he was willing to unite all Germans successfully and stand up to the West. In Czechoslovakia, things did not go well. The country slowly fell apart as Poland seized the opportunity to take areas with Polish inhabitants in October of 38. Similarly, Slovakia declared independence and quickly allied with Germany. Hungary took the parts that contained Hungarians. What remained of Czechoslovakia lost 70% of its heavy industry, a third of its population, and its mountainous defenses in the Sudetenland. The country was in disarray as Germany began constructing highways to connect its new empire. These are pictures of Germans as they arrived. German propaganda liked to portray this as a very celebratory event, with these Nazi soldiers arriving and people celebrating them in the streets. This is probably the most famous photograph of that, with the woman crying. And you don't really know whether she's crying because she's so happy that now they're part of Germany, or if she's sad about it. But she was probably an ethnic German, so she might have been crying tears of joy. Shortly after the annexation, Jews living in the Sudetenland were widely persecuted. Only a few weeks afterwards, Kristallnacht occurred. As elsewhere in Germany, many synagogues were set on fire and numerous leading Jews were sent to concentration camps. In later years, the Nazis transported up to 300,000 Czech and Slovak Jews to concentration camps. Many of them were killed or died there. Jews and Czechs were not the only afflicted peoples. German socialist, communist, and pacifists were widely persecuted as well. Some fled the Sudetenland via Prague and London to other countries. There was also a plebiscite to decide whether they supported the move by Hitler. Again, the yes is very large. In March of 1939, Czech President Hacha 
met with Hitler and was told that if he didn't agree to unite with Germany, they would invade. He capitulated and German troops occupied the rest of the country. On March 18th, Prime Minister Chamberlain told the British cabinet that, quote, no reliance could be placed on any assurances given by the Nazi leaders. Clearly, Hitler had demonstrated that appeasement was not working. <laughs> 